ensure that your base is firm and level. For a log cabin, we would advise either a solid concrete base or concrete slabbing laid to the required dimensions of the building. We recommend that a gap of two foot is left between the edge of the base and any surrounding walls, fences or other items. This will ensure there is sufficient clearance for building your log cabin and to allow you to treat the building afterwards with a good quality wood preservative. Additional tools will be required to fit the building. A rubber mallet, hammer, tape measure, spirit level, saw and portable electrical drill are needed. To start, lay your floor bearers out and evenly space them across your base. Whilst we would not advise installing during adverse weather, if necessary, some PVC stripping can be used to cover the bearers and prevent any moisture from reaching the floorboards. Once the bearers are down, lay the initial base logs out across the bearers, ensuring that all angles are square. These are then to be secured to the bearers using screws to prevent movement of the building. Using a rubber mallet, gently but firmly tap the logs together at the joints, making sure they are tightly secured within the tongue and groove across the entire length of the log. Once you have built up the log sufficiently around the entirety of the building to around a third of the way up the windows, these can now be slotted into the areas provided, pressing down firmly on the top of the kit to make sure there are no gaps around the bottom edge. Continue to build up the wall logs to the height of the door framework. These framing pieces to be slotted to the bottom, sides and top of the frame and tap securely into place using the rubber mallet. Once the wall logs have been successfully built up, the next stage is to install the roof joists, which are tapped into the upright channels. These run from one side of the building to the other. Your log cabin should be beginning to take shape and you can now work on some of the smaller areas of the construction process. The veranda area in front of the door is created using the pressure treated boards provided. If you use a spare board as the spacer between each slat, this will create a consistent and even gap between the boards without need for constant measurement. The boards are then to be screwed to the bearers beneath, ensuring that they are flush with the side of the log cabin. The exterior support beam can now be installed onto the corner of the decking to support the overhanging roof beams. You may need to cut this down to fit as the beam is not pre-cut to allow for the roof beams. It can then be secured using appropriate screws. When starting the roof, place the initial board with the groove facing away from the building. Line it up to the end of the roof joist and secure in place. Then secure along the roof support beams before placing any other boards. Lock all boards in place, making sure the tongue of the board is securely within the groove of the next and flush at the edge before nailing each board to the roof beams at each end. When you reach the last board of the roof, you may find that you have a larger overhang on the board than needed. This should be cut down to be level with the end of the roof support beam. Don't worry, this is perfectly fine and any rough looking edges will be covered by the roofing felt and fascia boards. When installing the floor, secure the initial board against the cabin wall with the groove facing outwards and nail in place. On each board thereafter, place the nails at an angle to make sure the slats are pushed together firmly, with the groove of the next board covering the end of the nail. As with the exterior roof support, you may need to measure and cut sections of the floor to allow for the internal angles of the wall logs. When you have finished with the floor, you can now install the finishing strips which go around the edge of the flooring. Measure the internal dimensions of the cabin and then cut each length to size. These are then secured around the edges of the floor to neaten any rough edges and give a more aesthetically pleasing floor. Simply line up the barrels of the door hinges with that of the framework and slot the doors down. Once closed, the doors are covered by the framework, preventing their removal for security. The storm braces give extra support to the building during periods of high winds. These are affixed to the walls of the log cabin at the top and bottom of the bracer by drilling through the wall log and securing the bolt on the other side of the wall. With the roofing felt, roll this out in a large area and measure enough felt to cover the roof across the length of the apex. These need to be long continuous strips to ensure a secure covering. For this building you will need 5 strips. The felt should be laid leaving a 2 inch overhang along each edge of the building so that the felt can be secured to the roof beams and further protected with the fascia boards. 
Secure the felt along the edges, placing tacks approximately two inches apart along the entirety of the roof. When laying the next strip of felt, overlap the lower piece by approximately an inch to make sure that water cannot collect on the roof and will run off evenly. Fold the roofing felt over the edge of the roof and secure firmly to the ends of the roof support beams. Use the fascia boards to lever the roof felt down. This will now secure the felt and get your log cabin looking neat and tidy. When attaching the fascia boards and finials, please make sure to pre-drill any holes to prevent the wood from splitting. For the final touches, ensure that the front felt of the log cabin is secured with even tacks for a professional finish.